Hello everyone, I am Dr. Saurabh Dixit and today I have got a very interesting case. So in the series of trauma, one thing which is very common is thoracic trauma and post RTA, this is one of a very common thing. So today we have a very interesting case, but let me hear it from my RMO. So we have Dr. Devedi with us who will tell me about the history. Dr. Saab, what presentation was this patient? Ka? Patient came, yeah. history of RTA yeah. and left side pain, ribs, fracture ribs. Okay, so uh, according to RMO, there is a fracture of the ribs. So, let me ask the patient, what was your pain? Sir, I was So, patient is giving you a classical history of RTA post, you can say, a road traffic accident. So, let us, uh, post, uh, he, he, he met with an accident, with a motor vehicle accident, motor vehicle accident. So, whenever we have a suspected thoracic trauma, the first line of management actually is decided after stabilizing the patient. So, we go for the stabilization of the patient. Now, whenever patient comes to the ER, we don't start jumping and we don't start making the conclusions. The first thing is the primary survey. So, when we talk about the primary survey, what are the things that we should ensure? Answer is we have to take care of A, B, C, D. A for airway, B for breathing, C for circulation, D for disability and E for exposure. But before that, we have to understand that there could be a suspected, you can say, airway blockage or maybe a cervical spine injury. So, whenever, now this patient is hemodynamically stable because this accident happened 24 hours back. So, now we are recording this case maybe after uh, a long time, but this patient right now is hemodynamically stable, but we should have actually secured the airway. When we talk about securing airway, we have to align the airway in a straight line fashion. So when we talk, there are three maneuvers. We have chin lift, we have neck tilt and we have jaw thrust. And for suspected injuries or if we want to stabilize the neck, we have to use a heart collar. Now coming to this case, this is a case of fracture ribs. Probably this is a flail chest. When we talk about the flail chest, what is the criteria for a flail chest? It's a very, very, very simple thing. When we talk about flail chest, so in this case, this patient is having the left-sided rib fracture. Now, whenever we talk about these ribs, the classical criteria that we have for flail chest is fracture of two or more consecutive ribs at two or more places. Now, this is what is very important because there is a lot of controversy. There are a lot of people who say fracture of three or more ribs. No. So, according to the latest, you can say, if you see ATLS guidelines also, it is fracture of two or more ribs at two or more uh, places. Now, one very important thing that you have to understand that there is one more criteria that is dislodgement of one costochondral junction and this is what is very important. Now, students, you have to understand why flail chest is so, you can say, so difficult to understand. We all have a lot of concepts about flail chest but we don't understand it properly. Let me tell you, this is a rib cage. During inspiration, it goes out and during expiration, it goes in. So when it goes out, the thoracic volume increases and as you know that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. That means that during inspiration, the pressure goes down and therefore the air goes in. So this is very simple that during inspiration, the intrathoracic volume is increased, thus the pressure goes down and vice versa happens during expiration. Now let me tell you one scenario. Let us take this, this is as a broken rib. So this is a broken rib rib is very light so what happens during inspiration the chest wall moves out since this is light and disconnected from both the sides it will go inside so actually if you see it is doing the opposite of what a normal rib cage would be doing and what happens this is what is known as paradoxical movement of the rib cage the problem here is that a lot of you believe that this rib cage this broken rib fragment which is known as flail segment will not allow the you can say the lung to expand but this is wrong why because this is too light to compress a lung <coughs> even if to some extent it compresses also the contralateral lung is there to compensate for that the concept is not this the concept is that in bil if you see any rib if you see any rib in in these ribs we have intercostal nerve bundles so all these nerve bundles are intact right now if you talk about a normal patient. What happens, take my this hand to be flail segment, take my this hand to be the normal rib. In between them, what is happening? 
this is the type of movement because it is doing a paradoxical movement so with every movement the nerve is getting stressed and that is what is causing pain let us take it from the patient also aapko dard ho raha hai yes the only complaint aur koi takleef hai sirf dard ho raha hai iski wajah se abhi thodi si aapko khansi wagaira bhi ho rahi hai so can you see the classical thing that we get to see because of stretching of the intercostal nerves there is a compromise of the you can say rib cage movement why whenever your body experiences pain your brain gives a command to the rib cage that reduce the movements and when the rib cage movements are reduced as a compensation to relieve the pain obviously these rib cage movements are also essential for the normal respiration and that is why the normal respiration is jeopardized and thus it's very important to see the oxygen saturation now let me show you the x ray of this patient <coughs> it might not be that visible in this case if you see ha ye aap on kariye in this case if you see this is a broken rib here a rib is broken here unfortunately i will i'm not able to show it against the white box i'll show it again i'll add it in the clip so it is broken at two places at least two places it is broken and one costochondral junction is also if you see the rib 1 2 3 uh, second third fourth they are all broken they are all broken if you see this and one costochondral junction is also dislodged so this is a complex type of rib fracture where there are single segments also there are consecutive segments which are creating a failed segment effect and also one costochondral junction is dislodged in this case now when we talk about the patient the only thing that we need to understand is patient is having pain and because of this there may be some respiratory compromise to see this i will also focus on the saturation index of this patient and let me tell you one very important thing about this that if the pain is relieved 90% of the patients don't require a ventilation support and this is what is very 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 important if you see in this patient the saturation is absolutely fine we have settled down the pain so pain is settled and thus we don't have a increased pulse so if the pulse would have been increased in this case this would mean this would mean that the saturate this would mean that the pain is still there so majority of the time what is the first line management of any flail chest answer is reduce the pain once the pain is reduced the patient might not even require so once the pain is re relieved 90% of the patients don't even require an oxygen support so what is the first line thing that we get that what is the first line treatment and treatment of choice for flail chest it is nothing but simple analgesic so reduce the pain if required like in this patient the patient is absolutely stable hemodynamically stable the saturation is absolutely fine so this patient doesn't require any ventilatory support so it is not ensets plus ppv it is ensets plus minus ppv or analgesics plus minus ppv now what could be a problem with this flail chest one very important thing that we all need to understand is that this broken rib is very sharp is very sharp and if this is the lung this is the rib every time they are hitting this is not a problem because just try doing it this imagine this to be a balloon lung to be a balloon and take this to be a pin so if you hit the balloon with the shaft of the pin it will never puncture but in case if the rib get mal aligned it is having a risk of what puncture of the lung and that is why it is always advisable that any patient of flail chest even the patient is hemodynamically stable observe them for at least 24 to 48 hours because there is a potential of you can say a lung injury and that is why you need to understand there's a lot of controversy going on where patients say where students say that nowadays flail chest is no more considered as a life threatening injury students it is a potentially life threatening injury it's not an immediately life threatening injury like tension pneumothorax or open pneumothorax it's a potential life threatening injury why it has a potential to cause that life risk of life and how it can there are two three mechanism one is by respiratory arrest due to excessive pain and the second is underlying pulmonary injury however if there is underlying pulmonary injury in that case only you will go for a thoracotomy otherwise all the patients of flail chest are managed conservatively there are lot of people who say that we require an internal fixation yes in severe you can say jeopardized fragments of the rib in that case you might go for internal fixation with titanium wires otherwise there is no role of external strapping or external fixation there are a lot of people who do an external strapping for this so when imagine <coughs> if i do an external strapping 
already the rib cage is not able to move and if i compress it from the outside the ventilation cycle will be severely jeopardized thus we need to understand that in order to get into the good clinical skills we have to know if your brain doesn't know your eyes will never see so next time whenever you get a patient of flail chest your approach should be simple observe the patient for the paradoxical movement observe the patient for any severe excru excruciating respiratory distress and give proper analgesics so thank you for watching do share this video with your near and dear ones and do subscribe